Hello, I'm Nick Huntington Klein. This is the second video in the data communication series. Uh, what I'm be talking about today is some principles of data visualization. In particular, I'm going to be talking about clutter and focus on a data visualization. So uh, we're on the internet. We see a lot of data visualization. We see a lot of things posted to our you know, Twitter feed or whatever, uh, and there's a lot of graphs and things like that. And, and something that you, you tend to notice that pops up a lot is what I would like to call data art. Uh, what data art is, in my mind, this is my own definition, this is not like a standard thing, but it's it's something that takes data and uses it to make a beautiful picture. But that picture doesn't really tell you much about the data. It is a representation of the data, but it's not really intended to get across any sort of results that are in the data. Uh, again, often these are beautiful, they're lovely to look at, they make you think maybe, oh, that's kind of cool where the data came from, but they don't actually teach you anything. They're not pieces of data communication, they are pieces of data art. Uh, so let's give some examples of that. Uh, so and, and a, a common mistake that these make is that they show you the data rather than trying to tell you a result about the data by showing you something. Okay, uh, and they're showing too much information, there's too much clutter and not enough focus. So let's give an example here. So let's take this graph, uh, for example. What is this graph? So first of all, can you look at this graph and tell me what it's about? I mean, it looks really cool. It's got some neat colors on there. It's got some nice swoops. Any guesses? No. Okay, so this is a graph that shows how the different uh, books of the Bible relate to each other when they make references to each other. So anytime you see a little arc, uh, that's one book of the Bible referring to another book of the Bible. And it looks really cool. Uh, however, you can't tell what by just, just by looking at this what it is. And even now that you do know what it is, does this really tell you anything that you didn't know or that you need that you have you learned anything? Have you learned anything about the Bible by looking at this? Probably not, right? It's really hard to get a result out of this as interesting as it may be. So that's one example uh, where we have a little bit too much going on. So much information is on the page, in fact. There's lots of really cool information on this page, but you can't get any of it from this, uh, this graph. So let's look at another one. Uh, this is a, a graph about South Koreans drinking coffee. Looks beautiful, looks really cool, right? We got this neat little sort of 3D model of a coffee cup breaking apart, and then we have these five numbers going up. Uh, this is, again, we have the information. Now, now we do have the information. We can get the information that we need from this graph. Uh, we know how many cups of coffee people are drinking in South Korea, but there's so much clutter and distracting information here, right? It takes a while before you can even find the information that you're looking for. Uh, and really, if all they wanted to tell us was that people are currently drinking 377 cups of coffee, that's already in the headline. The data visualization is completely irrelevant. It's just sort of there for, you know, eye candy. Uh, so let's do another example, something that has way too much clutter. Uh, uh, this, is an, this is a graph of cost of healthcare expenses by state. And so I've, I've sort of trimmed just a part of this graph, uh, but there's one of these little hospital beds for every state. Uh, so there's 50 different hospital beds on this image. Uh, and what's going on here? So for each hospital bed, what do we have? Uh, it's telling us that the amount of blood in the little IV, in the little drip thing is the expenses per hospital inpatient day. The angle of the uh, seat is the uh, average employee deductible with their insurance plan. Uh, and then the closeness of the, uh, the little legs on the hospital bed are the uh, average potential out-of-pocket costs. And we can sort of see how those numbers differ by different states. Now, there's a lot of clutter in here. There's a lot of visualization in here, but we're not really getting any sort of story. It's really difficult to just at a glance know what any of these are. If we just look at one of these states, we would never guess that that's what those numbers mean because the indicators that they've chosen, the angle of the hospital bed, the amount of blood in the thing, the height of the, of the bed have nothing to do with the actual numbers that they're supposed to represent. Also, they've chosen indicators that are really hard to distinguish. Like, look at this here. You know, so here is... Uh, 1915, that's a little bit less blood. Here's 3,000, that's a lot more, it's a, it's a little bit more blood, but it's hard to tell really, just at a glance, the angle is really hard to figure out too, right? Here's 8,200 deductible, uh, here's 7,300 deductible. Can you really even tell those apart? Not really. So there's a lot of clutter here. We have not focused in on the story that we are trying to tell. We have not focused in on demonstrating the part of the data that we need to do. So what can we do to try to clutter, to try to focus in our results? Uh, and to reduce the amount of clutter. Well, one thing we can do is we can rely on knowing how humans process information. So there's a couple of principles of visual perception called the Gestalt, or maybe Gestalt uh, principles of visual perception. And these have to do with things that make humans focus on a particular part of an image. If we follow these principles, we can get people's eyes to focus in on just a certain part of the image uh, that we want them to focus in on. And this will help them sort of extract the useful information from anything else that might need to be on the graph, and it will help them focus in on what they need to see. 
And those principles are proximity, uh, so how close things are, similarity, the sort of kind of thing that things are. These are all very common sense principles, by the way. Nothing's going to shock you here. Uh, enclosure, if we box off a certain part of the image, you're going to pay attention to that image and not the rest of what's going on. Uh, uh, closure, uh, so if you can, again, this is very similar to enclosure, can you, can you sort of uh, uh, stop off uh, what's going on and just sort of focus on everything right there. Continuity, uh, if there's a line going on and then there's a break in that line or anything like that, if there's something that you'd sort of expect to continue but it doesn't, your mind sort of fills in the gap, right? You can sort of see a line sort of between my hands here even that it's not really there. Uh, so that can help right there. And also connection, if we connect two things, they're gonna feel like they are related in some way. Think about like a line graph or something like that. Let's do some quick examples of some of these things. So proximity, uh, if you put things closer together, they feel like they go together and they help you focus on those two things together and also help you distinguish what's going on. So let's take this table, for example. This is a very basic undecorated table of, uh, of some, uh, some numbers from the, a budget. Right? Now, all that I've done is I've taken a little bit of a, a, a row there, a blank row, and I've put it between marketing and R&D. What does that do? That immediately makes us think about marketing and sales going together and R&D and HR going together, right? It distinguishes the top two categories from the bottom two categories. So if I was trying to make the point, let's say, uh, tell the story uh, that sales and marketing have much bigger budgets than R&D and HR, that makes that comparison a lot easier than if I were just to put all four rows together. Just that tiny little thing right there makes it a lot easier for our brains to process what's going on. So about similarity. Uh, so similarity has to do with the kind of thing that it is. Uh, so here we have a graph uh, of just some, some cars, a uh, classic data set called the MT cars data set. And all that I've done is I've colored uh, differently. I've used color to, to create, so I've got similar colors on one side and the other, uh, the kind of transmission that we have. Uh, and so looking at this graph, you can see the blue dots are all up to the top left. The red dots are, are down to the bottom right. And that's an immediate relationship that we can see. It takes us no time at all to figure out that those different colors are in different spaces. Then we can read a little bit more and say, okay, well, then we got mileage up on the y-axis, we got car weight on the x-axis. Okay, so the manual cars have, uh, have uh, better mileage and lower weights, and the automatic cars have lower mileage and higher weights, right? But even before we get to reading the axes, we already know that there's a big distinction between the colors there, and then we have to use the rest of the information to fill in the context. How about enclosure? So enclosure is about putting a, a, a box around things, right? Circling things or off putting, if, you know, if we have a, a, a scatter plot, for example, drawing a circle or a square around some of the dots will help you focus in on just those. Uh, we can also set things off with shading. If we just simply shade uh, an area, it will help us think about things in that shading differently from the things outside of that shading, right? It will close off whatever we uh, set apart. Right. So here's an example uh, from Fred, uh, which, is, which is a government agency, or which is a government data service that um, uh, uh, from the Federal Reserve, sorry, that uh, provides information. Here's the unemployment rate in Ohio, and what they've done is they've shaded recession areas. So this makes it easier for us to distinguish recessions from non-recessions, and you can immediately, it's a lot easier to see, for example, uh, than if we didn't have the enclosure that, let's say, oh yeah, look, like during the recessions, the unemployment rate in Ohio really jumps up, right? Uh, so, uh, and so making the, the easy to distinguish between the recession areas and the non-recession areas, all we had to do was add that little bit of shading and it makes the, the work for our brains a lot easier. We got lazy brains, we got to help them along by really playing up, uh, playing into our instincts, right? That's really what we're doing here. We know that people look at things in a certain way and we are taking advantage of that to try to play into our inst in instincts so that the information that we provide is the same as the information that people take in. How about continuity? So continuity, as I mentioned, if there's a break in something, then we tend to assume and fill it in, uh, even though it's not really there. So here's an example of a line graph with some year-on-year -year changes in sales. Uh, now, this is a year-on-year -year graph, and so if there's February 29th in one year, but not in another year, right, we have a leap year, uh, then there's going to be a gap. You can't compare February 29th in 2020 to February 29th in 2019 because there is no February 29th, uh, 29th 2019. Uh, so there's a gap in our, in our comparison here, but, you know, looking at this, our brains immediately fill in what that line is. Like it's impossible for me to look at this line and not mentally draw an additional little line between the end of uh, February and the beginning of March here, right? I just do it. I don't even know if that's right, right? If there had been a February 29th, maybe it would have gone down here or maybe it would have gone up here, but we don't know that. So we would make that connection right there. This graph also helps us figure out about uh, uh, connection. So we can see that there's a, really this, this looks like a line, but it's actually a lot of individual points being connected by lines, right? Because we don't have, you know, uh, March 4th and a half, right? This isn't a continuous measure. 
Uh, so we have discrete points that are being linked, but our minds automatically process them into being related one period of time. So at this day comes right before this day, which comes right before this day, which comes right before this day. The fact that we've connected them with a line tells me that there is some sort of story or path being followed here. I'm naturally inclined to believe that there's a path being followed. All right, so those are some basic visual principles that you can use to try to set apart certain parts of your data. Uh, which will help out with your visual, making your results visually clear, uncluttered, and focused on the result that you want to get across. Uh, it's one important principle to keep in mind as you try to focus on just the result that you want to get across and not distract your viewer uh, with information that you don't need, that they don't need to have, or that might distract them from what's actually going on in the data. Thank you.